Hello there to you all. My brave and curious dreamers, anyone here willing to go out of their comfort zone to become something new? I would like to tell you how to use role playing to improve your relationships. I know that a lot of us have been spending a lot of our time indoors for whatever reason over the last year, and we might be a little bit out of practice how to talk to someone, how to uh, spend quality time together. So I'd like to give you a few tips that I've learned over the last year GMing 230 games and uh, practicing uh, how to get better at being friends with people. So I'm going to start with a quote from a book that I read from Kate Velos. The book is called Getting, Getting Together, and the quote is, Sharing extraordinary feelings fosters, or sharing extraordinary experiences fosters feelings of closeness. And this is actually a study that was done at Stanford. So what this means is if you have an experience with someone where you're eating some peanut butter and jelly, it's probably going to be different if you let that person murder you as a vampire. <laughs> so I'd like to talk about why it's important to have experiences that are notable. And all of this is going to seem really obvious for a second. So let me just go. Uh, there are four seeds of relationships. There are four seeds of connection. There's proximity, uh, commitment, frequency, and compatibility. And role-playing can help with some of these, especially compatibility, because you get to see versions of yourself that you wouldn't have met otherwise. I'm going to talk a little bit about two-player LARPs, especially this really excellent series of art games by Lucian Khan. Yes, this is called Honey and Hot Wax. Now, I'd just like to give a short little story from this one, which I find quite exciting, because in this LARP anthology, there's many games that you can play for two people, but the one that I had the opportunity to play myself was called You Inside Us. And these kind of LARPs, these kind of small personal games, give you the opportunity to become totally different people together. And this one focuses on one person playing an artificial intelligence inside the same body as someone else. I was perhaps, I was playing a researcher and my friend was playing an artificial intelligence and what was so cool was that this artificial intelligence used to be a tractor, but then was put into a human body. <laughs> so the very first time that it had snacks and food, it got to describe how amazing this was to me. So the act of doing these two-player LARPs can give you the chance to focus on each other's feelings and experiences and get really precise. And what I would like to talk about is how you can make these games for your friends by yourself and how to personalize them. So here's some reasons why you might do this. It might be someone's birthday. You might make that person an escape room inside your house or make them feel like the, prince, uh, the, the princess of leaves. There's a lot of different reasons. I've been celebrating the equinox and solstices, so it feels like time is actually passing and not a monotonous. Uh, <laughs> You can also use this if you want to have super interesting dates. Not necessarily romantic dates, any kind of dates. Let me give you some more details. I like to base uh, my time on themes, and I like to plan ahead a lot. So if someone's going to be coming over to my house for, let's say, three hours, then I will have the first act, the second act, and the third act but I find the best way to do this is actually kind of similar to what Eleanor was saying, is pick something that you want to experience or have happen and communicate this with the person that you're planning this for. Uh, you can also ask uh, your partner what they would like to experience and then you can craft something for them. I did this uh, by using the eight schools of magic from Dungeons and da Dragons. And for this evening, we had a trial where they had to endure a fire being incredibly close to them, and they also had to figure out which of these things was actually real and not an illusion. And I enjoy giving 
the people that I'm engaging with small tasks to complete so they can feel proud of themselves for <laughs> impressing me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, another way to do this is if the two of you have just watched a film together, uh, you can take time to exist inside this universe together. This is like the shortcut way, because you can also read a book uh, and then play in that world for a while. Um, it's important that you agree on tone before going into your scenes. Uh, I also really recommend uh, having a specific amount of time that you're going to be playing together. Uh, one other thing that we should talk about is sensation goals. So sensation goals are things that uh, this has been mentioned a few times before in some of the past speeches, so there's a lot to learn tonight. But sensation goals are when you have something in mind that you'd like to experience, like touching the back of someone's neck, or looking them in the eye for a long period of time, or tasting something that makes them feel like they're at home. These things are things you can plan towards. So if I wanted someone to touch me on the back of the neck, I would think backwards from there. What would be interesting? Would they have claws? So, I, <laughs> uh, I recommend when you're planning these sort of personal events for people um, that you uh, ha have a goal. And it really doesn't have to be sexual, but it's nice if it's a little bit intimate. Something that you wouldn't just do with a stranger, like touch someone's uh, jaw or something, or take them somewhere in, um, in the forest that they haven't been before. Um, the final slide is about making a plan. I like to plan ahead. So I, I recommend starting with something really low key, saying to someone, can I have 15 minutes of your time? <laughs> someone that you know, but that you want to get to know better. Uh, in that time, the two of you can, like the spontaneous character creation is pretty cool because it gets part of you out that you might not have experienced otherwise. Just saying, hey, what would you like to be for a little while is great, or what would you like to experience for a little while is also really cool. Uh, but you want to create your characters together so that you exist in the same tone in the same universe. And I also recommend kind of like uh, the person who did the talk on dreams is to write the things down that you do. Because as you do these sort of scenes together, and as you LARP in general, you are creating a myth because your brain doesn't know the difference between things that actually happen to you and things that are happening to you in LARP. So writing things down can help you have a better idea about how your unconscious mind is responding to things. So I recommend that uh, you be brave, intimate, and vulnerable, and take a chance on asking people if they would like to have a little bit more role-playing in their life. 